What's up y'all? Lesson four, and today we're talking about playing in different keys, using your whistle to play in keys other than the key of D, which so far is all we've started with. With the regular D whistle, you can actually play in three major keys and three minor keys, as well as a couple of other options there. But we're gonna talk about that when we come back. dive into the details, let's talk general concepts. This is a D whistle. Well, why is it a D whistle? What defines that? Well, what that is is the lowest note on the whistle is D. That's the note. So we call this a D whistle. This, for example, is an A whistle because the lowest note here is an A. So it's actually a fifth or a fourth below the lowest note on this whistle. So that's how we refer to these things. And on a D whistle, we can obviously play in the key of D major, which is that first exercise we did way back in lesson one. Hopefully you're working on that and hopefully it's starting to sound like you want it to. But we can also play in the key of G major. And to do that, we start on the note G. We start a fourth up from the lowest note on the whistle. D, E, F, G. So we're starting on the note G. And the only difference between this and a regular scale regular D scale, is that we're starting there, so we're kind of starting halfway through, and instead of a C sharp, we have a C natural, which is played this way. There's a couple of ways to do it, which we'll get to, but here is your G scale, just for starters' sake. That's going from the lowest G on the whistle to the highest G on the whistle. And as far as the overall range of the instrument, you're kind of covering sort of the middle portion of it. There are some notes below that and there's some notes above it that you could play, but that's the G scale. And that's the exercise that I want you to work on, the G scale. Get it nice and clean just like that. And I would practice it going up and down just to get your fingers used to that, used to thinking in terms of that key. Because it is a bit of a different way of thinking. You know that anytime you're in the key of G, you're not going to be playing a C sharp. You're not going to be playing this with all fingers off the whistle. You're always going to be playing a C either this way, two fingers, or three fingers, or four fingers. And that's what we get into for homework. Figure out which of those works best for your whistle. A couple of tips, a conical bore whistle typically is going to play a C natural with two fingers like that, whereas a cylindrical bore whistle is usually going to be three or four. Even just doing that little trill thing, you can hear the pitch change a little bit. So your homework is to figure out which of those C naturals works the best on your specific whistle. And I would say get a tuner and check. That's Part of the, the puzzle, the other part of the puzzle is how does it feel? How is it transitioning from a B to that C natural? Does that work or would you, would you be better off playing? Try it and see what works and just see what feels the best and what's the most in tune. Now, if you get adventurous and you decide you wanna do some, let's say extra credit, don't wanna extend the school metaphor too far until we broke it. Let's say you wanted to extend what it is you were working on for this week. You can work on some relative minor scales. What's a relative minor? Apologies if you've been playing music of some other kind for a while, you know all about this. I'm no expert, I'm gonna break it down as simply as I possibly can. The relative minor is the minor version of the major scale that you just played. So let's say if we're playing the scale D, without changing any of the notes, all we're gonna do is change positioning and we're gonna get our minor scale out of that. In this case, it's basically a two steps down. So it would be a B minor scale. So two steps down from D, we land on the note B. If we play the, the same D scale, but starting on the note B, we're gonna get our relative minor. I know that's probably a lot of words to do something relatively simple. Let me play it so you'll know what I'm talking about. B minor scale.
it's higher, it's a lot more shrill, but I didn't use any notes that are different from what we used in the D major scale. I just started in a different place. Likewise, if we were to look at the scale G that we just did, if we were to drop that two notes down, we'd land on an E. So that's our relative minor, in this case E minor. And so we're gonna start on the note E and play all the same notes that we would in a G scale. What does that mean? That means a C natural, not a C sharp. So E minor scale, That's E minor, relative minor of G. Again, using the same fingering that you would for the G major scale, just starting in a different spot. So advanced homework, let's call it. Mess around with those relative minors. Make sure that they start to sound familiar. The reason for that is because there's a ton of tunes in all of these relative minors that you can play very easily on the whistle. So we're gonna get to those, and you're gonna need to be able to be comfortable and be familiar and be, be uh, expecting of which version of the scale we're playing, in this case, C sharp or C natural. So keep that in mind as you're working on them. Let me know how it goes in the comments. Good luck, y'all, and I will see you guys next week. Cheers.